Well, hello, good morning, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah, and this is Brown Family Goods. I am looking forward to doing some different things here on the channel this year. One thing that I had in mind this year is to try some new recipes. Tonight's dinner is going to be some new things for us. So almost all new recipes, the first of which we're gonna ease into the new recipes. Alan is not the most adventurous eater, so we're gonna start with a burger. And I think that the burger is gonna be agreeable. So <laughs> that's always good. A burger is generally a pretty safe thing. So we'll do the Asian burger on a sourdough bun. Delicious. We're also going to do some roasted potatoes. Now this is going to be a little bit different roasted potato than you're used to because this is more of a British style roasted potato. I'm also going to do a dessert today. And this one is called pecan butterscotch cookies. The interesting thing about this cookie recipe that I thought was a little bit different is that it starts with buttermilk pancake mix. So that'll be a first for me as well. I'm trying some new things today you guys let's see how it goes let's jump right in though with the buns we need to get them started so that they can go ahead and proof and ferment throughout the day and have really good flavor by this evening so i have a few things out here i went ahead and fed my sourdough starter last night so this is as much sourdough starter as i have on hand it is nice and active and bubbly though so here she is okay so for the buns recipe i am going to use my kitchen scale for this because anytime you're doing bread it really you're, I promise you, you're going to get a better result if you use the scale and weigh things out rather than using um, cup measures. That That is something that I have learned over time for sure. Um, so I'm just going to use my kitchen scale and things will go a lot better. And if you get the measurements nice and precise, then the bread turns out almost every time. So what I want to start with is a little bit of sugar and water. So I'm going to do 50 grams of sugar. So I'm going to put 50 grams in here. That's probably about one scoop. Yeah, that's about a quarter of a cup. And then I'm going to put the water next, 240 grams of water. So just tear the scale out, zero it out. And then we'll go for 240 grams of water. Okay, 240. So that's good. And then 50 grams of starter is what we need. That's about a quarter of a cup. So we have plenty here. That's actually 58, so okay, that's fine too. And I'm just gonna mix the starter, sugar, and water together. So you do wanna make sure that when you're working with active starter or any kind of yeast product that you don't have too hot of water, but you do want the water to be warm so that it encourages the yeast to be active and not sluggish. So just working those together, and then, like I said, I'll go ahead and just quickly feed the starter that I have left sitting out here. And like I said, I'm just adding a little bit of flour to it. I get a different spoon out. I'm going to add a little bit of filtered water from my fridge. Mix this together until it's the consistency that I like. And then this can go back in the fridge. Um, until I'm ready to use it again on another day. So even though I'm putting it in the fridge, it doesn't necessarily stop the um, starter from eating and fermenting and all of that, but it slows it down quite a bit so that I don't have to feed it like it would, like I would if it was sitting out on the counter. Just mix this up, and this is kind of a gloopy um, cake batter consistency. That's fine. If I'm getting it ready to be used, I will make it a little bit thicker than that, but this will be fine for the refrigerator. So I'm just gonna toss it back in the fridge until I need it the next time. Next up going into here is gonna be 360 grams of flour. I don't know if I have enough here for that, but we'll see. Take my spoon out and then I will zero out again. And let's see, I think that's about three, three cups of flour and I don't think I have three cups here, but let's check and see, 360 grams. Maybe. Oh, it might be right at it. 355, 360, perfect. <laughs> that was exactly how much I had left after I fed the sourdough starter. How did I do that? I have no idea. Okay, now I'm just gonna mix this together. Oh, I need 10 grams of salt also. It's a good amount of salt, probably about a tablespoon and a half. I mean, a teaspoon and a half. 
Okay. Bread just takes a good amount of salt. It really does. It needs it. Okay, I can get off of the scale at this point and put it away. Because that's all the ingredients that are going into here. So I'm just going to mix this up. And it's not going to be like the driest dough. It's kind of going to be kind of sticky. So we'll just mix it up the best we can for now. And then we'll put it to the side for a little while and let the flour really absorb all the water. And the dough will kind of come together as it hydrates and sits for about 30 minutes. So you see, I'm just kind of mixing this up into a rough, rough dough. Pulling all the flour in and all that. And then I'm not going to do much more than stir this together just like this. And then I'll pop it into the um, oven with the oven light on. Scrape all of this off of here. All I have done is just bring that together. And then we will continue to work with this throughout the day over the next little bit. And um, you'll see exactly how this all comes together. So I'm just going to put this into my oven. It's not on. Only the light is on. Just enough, just enough warmth in there to keep it going and make it nice and active. Okay, now we're going to start on the pecan butterscotch cookie. This is probably the easiest looking cookie recipe that I have seen in a long time. So this recipe has five ingredients. And that is it. So that sounds perfect to me. The first one is going to be this, what they call complete buttermilk pancake mix. So it's like a Bisquick brand or a store brand of the same. So into the bowl it goes. That's just one cup of that. It also calls for one third cup of melted butter. So that is about almost six tablespoons of melted butter. That's going straight in as well. Next up is the butterscotch pudding mix. This is the one that is 3.4 ounces and it's got the sweetener and everything in it. So into the box, I mean into the bowl here it goes. I poked it when I was opening it so it's already coming out. <laughs> Straight in. I love butterscotch and I love pecans. So both of these spoke my language. An egg goes in here. I'm just gonna beat the egg just a little bit before I put it into the mix. And my butter was warm but not hot. Straight on in. And then we'll mix this up just a little bit and then add the nuts. It's a half a cup of nuts. And this is a pretty small batch for cookies. So honestly, we may not freeze any of these. I may just go ahead and bake them all up. Okay, looks like cookie dough. It's thick, but not too thick to mix with a spoon. I was really hoping to not have to get my mixer out today for any of this, so we're good. <laughs> So I'm going to set this aside. I'll put my mess away and then we'll just scoop these out and get them rolled onto a cookie sheet. I think the pecans in this are going to be so good though. I just bought the chopped pecans and they're quite frankly, they're not like really finely chopped, which I am happy with that because they'll get nice and toasty in the oven when they bake. So I think that's going to be so good. Okay, so I'm just going to use my cookie scoop. I'm going to scoop them all out first and then I'll go back through and uh, roll them a little bit. And flatten them. Okay, we got all of these smashed down like they're supposed to be, so I'm just going to set them on my back counter back there until the oven is finished preheating. It's coming up to 350 degrees, and then we'll put these in for, I believe it said 13 to 15 minutes, but I'll check it again before we put them in. Okay, it's time to start on the potatoes at this point. And first things first, I'm going to peel them up. So I have myself a little garbage bowl here. These are some Yukon Gold potatoes that I just grabbed at the store the other day. Honestly, to me, the type of potato doesn't really matter that much. But if you have a preference, go ahead and use your preference. Russets are really good for this because they're nice and starchy. But I don't find that it really matters that much. The method is more of what matters. So the first thing that you do with these potatoes is boil them. So I'm going to, well, the first thing that you do is peel them. And then I'm just going to cut the potatoes in half. These are not that big of potatoes to begin with. 
So you want them to be sort of like bite size, but not too small either, because they do get a lot of cooking in order to get really, really crispy. So um, we will first peel them and cut them in half, and then we will boil them until they're nice and fork tender. And at that point, since it's early in the day, we will put our potatoes in the refrigerator and deal with them again later. But later on is when you'll roast up the potatoes in some fat in the oven and get them really, really crispy on the outside. That is where the magic really happens. So anyway, let me get these potatoes all peeled up and then I'm gonna give them a quick rinse as well, just to get some of the starch off the outside. We'll fill up the pot with water and boil these up for about 10 or 15 minutes until they're nice and fork tender. I got some water, it's about half inch above the potatoes here, and I am going to move over a little bit because I wanna use this burner, it's better size. So I'm gonna move over to this burner here. I'm not going to even worry about salting these or anything at this point because all I'm trying to do is get them to a fork tender stage and um, par cook them. The flavor will come later when we roast them in the oven. Okay, we have got to get some ingredients out for this one. Some hoisin, soy sauce. I'm going to use garlic powder. It calls for a little bit of seasoned salt. Also, I'm gonna use this Kinder's something or another, a little bit of chopped onion, a little bit of green onion. Okay, so first I'm gonna mix up the like flavorings and then last I'll add in the um, pork. So I need to chop a little onion. So I'll do about half of this small onion and I'll just make it really, really finely diced. Oh, I could grate it in here. Maybe I'll do that. I think every side except for this one on this box grater is sort of worthless. Like all that did was just kind of juice the onion. So I am going to actually use the other half and use it on the bigger box grater side. That way we actually have a little bit of minced onion in here. My potatoes are boiling, so Alexa, set a potato timer for 10 minutes. Okay, now we actually have some onion pieces in here. Hey there, friend. I just wanted to let you know that the full recipe for each of these brand new recipes that I'm trying today will be in the description box of today's video. But in the future going forward, I am putting together a recipe website. That way you can click over to the website and have all the printable recipes right there as well. So that'll be coming up. And as soon as that's done, you'll see that in the description box for each video going forward too. So anyway, you'll have to let me know today in the comments below what you think of the new recipes and what you think of trying some new recipes together every single week this year. So hopefully that'll be something that you guys will like. I know that I liked this um, and Alan definitely liked trying something new because many times I will make something and then I just kind of forget about whatever it was that I made because I just basically threw it together. So um, you guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments below. I do have a little burger press here, which I really like because it gets everything to a pretty uniform size. I don't have any of my little papers left that fit this little burger press specifically. Oh, Clark's looking at me through the back door. Um, so I'm just cutting down, these are actually air fryer liners, but just something to go in here, that way the burger comes out easily. Now, before I start on pressing my burgers, I wanna test these potatoes out with a fork and see if we're getting close on them or not. No, not quite, because the timer's about to go off for them. Alexa, add five minutes to the timer. I'm going to patty up the burgers. Let me grab me a plate. They smell good already, just the meat with the seasoning. Press it down. Yum, yum. 
These are going to be so good. I'm excited for them. Alan loves grilled pineapple, so I think he's really going to love them too. And we'll reshape this one as the last step. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, all of this dirty stuff is going in this bowl. The patties will go in the fridge. Patties into the fridge until later today. So I'm going to poke the potatoes again and see if they are done. Yes, that is better. So you can see that the potato, my fork goes in here. You really can't see into my pot, obviously, but I'm poking the potato and it comes off the fork as well. So these are done. Quickly, I'm going to get them drained so that they stop cooking. So 15 minutes was just right for the potatoes. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna put these into the fridge until later today. I got my cookies done. I'm just gonna put them onto a plate for later today. And I may have already tried one, but don't worry, I'll try another one if I must. They, they turned out delicious. Um, I will say you can faintly detect the kind of biscuity flavor. Let's try it. Like when you first bite into it, honestly, they're so good. When you first bite into it, you can sort of detect the biscuity flavor because you don't get hit with like super sweet instantly, but you do get a lot of good butterscotch flavor and the pecans in them are so nutty and toasty. That makes it perfect. So I highly recommend these. I would also like to see like what other flavors would taste like too. I can't really think of what else I would do offhand, but there's tons of different pudding mixes out there. So I would say, try these out. This is a winner for sure. And also it doesn't make a gigantic batch. So that's really nice too. We'll eat on these for a few days and we won't have, you know, tons and tons around. So give them a go. I think you're going to actually really like them. Now we need to start to do a few stretch and folds. What does that even mean? All we're going to do is literally start to stretch the bread and fold it in on itself. I'm going to grab a glove because I am not a huge fan of touching dough, touching dough, and touching dough. It kind of gets on my nerves. So all we do at this part is literally pull up from the bottom, stretch it, and lay it back over on itself. We're going to do this three times over the next few hours and then we're just going to let it sit after that. What this does is develops the gluten a little bit and works some air bubbles. Okay. That's good enough. We'll pop the lid back on, put it back into the oven just to stay warm and then come back. I'm going to set my timer for about 40 minutes. We'll do this again. We'll do this two or three more times. If you don't want to do stretch and folds, like if you want to mix this up and be done with it for a while, mix it up in your mixer with a dough hook and that will give you the same effect. So go ahead and mix it in the mixer, knead it for five or 10 minutes in the mixer until it forms a nice cohesive dough ball and then leave it until later. So you'll do a couple rises after that, like one rise, punch it down and then rise again before dinner before you bake these up. But if you, like me, don't really feel like getting your mixer out and you just wanna kinda of throw the dough together, I have time today. Obviously, I'm here at home, in the kitchen, cooking, doing things like that. So that's why I'm coming back to it and doing stretch and folds throughout the day, three times. But if you wanna save that step, just go ahead and mix it and knead it all up front at the very beginning, let it rise a couple of times and then bake it later. So that's how you will skip over the stretching and folding. So both the kneading at the very beginning and the stretch and folds there in order to accomplish the same thing, which is to develop gluten in the bread and make it have a nice chew to it and rise up really well and have a good structure when you bake it. So 
you just just choose whichever way you would like to do that. Mix it up at first and knead it with the dough hook and the mixer or stretch and fold for a couple of hours in the day. Okay, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon now, and I have been doing other stuff all afternoon long, and it's about time for me to get these little hamburger buns shaped and onto a pan so that they can do one final ride. to the pan to rise one more time. So I know it seems like bread is a huge undertaking, but honestly, the total amount of time that it actually takes is so minimal. And the ingredients are so much better than store-bought bread. There's no preservatives. There's not a bunch of funky stuff. There's no bread conditioners, none of that stuff. Try it out. Even if you don't do sourdough bread, maybe you'll do yeast bread, regular conventional yeast bread. You're going to get flour, salt, sugar, water, and yeast. That's about it. Maybe some butter or some oil as well, but that is pretty much the extent of bread ingredients if you make it at home. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to get off my soapbox now is, <laughs> is what I want to tell you. Don't be scared by the bread. I'm going to let these sit. They take about 30 minutes to kind of rise and get ready to bake. All they're going to do, they're really not going to double in size. They're just going to kind of poof a little bit. So um, I'll show you exactly what they look like right before I bake them. We're going to put a little egg wash on there, and we're also going to put some sesame seeds. Now, you can use sesame seeds. You can use um, herbs if you want to use some sort of herbs. You can use everything but the bagel seasoning. That is delicious. You might want to try that at some point. You can use no sesame seeds or topping at all and just do the egg wash on top. You could even do no egg wash on top. It doesn't really matter. The egg wash is just for the appearance and also to help whatever topping stick to the top. So I'm gonna do sesame seeds today, but like I said, you have a few options when it comes to topping that bread dough right before you bake it. Okay, I'm about ready to put these little guys in and I wanted to show you how they look just before I do. So I'm gonna poke this with my finger and you can see that it, well, can you see that at all? Yeah, you can. It springs back, but slowly. So it's given all, just about all that it can give as far as, um, oh, don't drop them. If you drop them, they will deflate. Um, it's given just about all that it can give as far as rising goes. Let me show you how I'm gonna put a quick egg wash on these. And then I also got out my sesame seeds. So like I said, you can use whatever kind of seasoning on top that you like or you don't have to use anything at all. All I did was put one egg yolk in here and I put about two tablespoons of water along with it. So that is all that is. We're getting close to the buns being done and as soon as the buns are done, I'm gonna crank my oven up to 400 degrees for the roast potatoes. And let me grab them out of the fridge. Now you see how they have sort of fluffy edges. They're a little bit roughed up and that's exactly what you want. If they're not quite roughed up enough, the roughed up 
edges is what makes them get really, really crispy. So if they're not quite roughed up enough, you just kind of shake them around where they, oops, I'm making a mess, where they do get roughed up on the edges. Okay, so these look good. Now what I'm going to do, whew, clean up my mess. I just dropped potato everywhere. I have a, I think this is an eight by eight. What do you say? Yeah, eight by eight. This is plenty big for the two of us and the amount of potatoes that I'm doing tonight. If you have more potatoes, then make sure you use a nice big pan where the potatoes are not really gonna be like all on top of each other. About a quarter of a cup of oil. And I'm just going to zhuzh it around. I'm gonna go ahead and put this pan of oil into the oven and let the oil heat up to a really, really screaming hot temperature. The thing is, once we put the potatoes in here and start cooking them in the oven at 400 degrees, they take about 40 minutes. And then we're gonna turn them every 15 or 20 minutes during that time as well to make sure all the sides of them get really, really super crispy and delicious. So 40 or 45 minutes. So, But to begin with, let's heat this oil up in this pan in the oven. And I'm gonna go ahead and put on just a drizzle of oil and some seasoning and toss these around. I am gonna use this Trader Joe's seasoning. I really like it. It's called 21 Seasoning Salute. And then this is just salt. So this one has a lot of different herbs and spices in it. It's got garlic and onion and herbs, salt, pepper, and everything as well. So a pretty generous amount of that. That's probably about a tablespoon. And then a good pinch of salt too. You can always add more salt later in the cooking process. So I'm not gonna go too crazy on it. But these, I'll just give them a toss and set these aside until I'm ready to get them into the oven. So those will wait for me for just another few minutes until the buns are done. And then we'll turn the oven up and get these in. So I'm finishing up getting the burgers ready. I just was rereading the recipe as well. This is the bacon that I'm using from Costco. Um, you're supposed to wrap the burger with the bacon. I'm not doing that because I don't think that's gonna stay put. Also, I think my pre-cooked bacon is probably gonna burn if I do that. I just realized that this said to do is to actually take the pineapple rings, get this open in the first place, I'll cut my hand, and um, put them on top of the burger patty, like into the, into the burger. So, that's what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna kind of dry the pineapple ring off on some paper towel so that it's not so wet with juice, with pineapple juice. And then, I just have a paper towel here. I'm just literally patting it dry a little bit. And I'll show you exactly what I'm doing so you're not like, what the heck. And now, I'm gonna press her into the burger there. Okay, trust the process, right? Two more. I guess I've just contaminated that whole thing of pineapple. Didn't think that through. Now, if we didn't really like care for pineapple that much, I wouldn't do this part, but um, I would just grill it separately. But I know we'll both like this because this will be tasty. Alexa, stop. That is my bun timer. So those are ready to come out. I'm gonna put these back in the fridge until I'm ready to cook them in just a little bit. Don't they look pretty? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, they're gonna be great. 